from bcfishing.com. Today we're out on Asuyas Lake in the South Okanagan of British Columbia and we're uh, taking full advantage of the sockeye year or the sockeye run this year. Um, we've had some really good success this year and uh, we've typically uh, stuck with the same gear throughout the entire season. Today what we wanted to do is just quickly take you through some of this tackle that we're using and uh, give you some tips and techniques on how you can improve your odds while you're out in the water. So one of the uh, new flashers in the market are called these T10 Gibbs flashers and they're 11 inch flashers. These guys right here. They're complete UV which means that they reflect uh, the color even further down in the water column. The way we're fishing these is around a 1.3 mile per hour troll between yeah between 1 and 1.3 miles per hour. If we're not using these flashers we're using a dodger setup and the difference between your dodger and flasher is that the dodger actually just goes back and forth where the flasher goes all the way around. It's important to pay really close attention to your uh, your leader length to your hoochie. And typically what we use when we're sockeye fishing is pink hoochies. Uh, I like to have a variety of different colors of pink, like a darker shade to a lighter shade. UV hoochies, if you can find them, again, because it holds that color as you go further down the water column, help out as well. I actually take the skirt of my hoochies and I trim them back to about two and a half inches. So two to two and a half inches is really ideal for, uh, for fishing for these sockeye. Because sockeye have soft mouths and we have to have a single barbless hook in these uh, freshwater tidal salmon fisheries, or non-tidal salmon fisheries, sorry, is uh, one thing I've switched to is actually called the sickle style octopus hook. And as you can see, there's actually quite the bend in there. This hook allows a better hook set. It doesn't do as much damage to the fish just in case it does get off. But also too, is that that little crook in the, in the uh, end of the hook actually really holds on and bites onto when you're reeling in. Leader length, we're typically running anywhere between 16 and 22 inches. I found uh, that's if we're running underneath the flasher. 18 inches seems to be really good this year. If I'm running under behind a dodger, I'm going between 8 to 12 inches. The reason for that is because it takes a little bit shorter of a leader to get the more action that you need because the, uh, the dodger only goes back and forth. Really good to have on your boat. Make sure you have a good tape measure of some sort, so that way if you find a pattern that continues to work on your leader length, you can kind of start duplicating on each side. So when fishing for these sockeye, you know, having a downrigger is really essential uh, on your boat. If you don't have a downrigger, you can use inline weights anywhere between 4 to 8 ounces. Uh, we're fishing typically between 50 and 60 feet in Asuyas Lake here. Some other lakes in British Columbia that have uh, sockeye that you're allowed to fish in, um, sometimes they hold up around 40 feet. But anyways, you're looking at the water column between 40 and sometimes all the way up to 70 feet. So having that downrigger definitely helps out. So to match your, your rod with it is you don't really need that heavy of a rod for these sockeye. They only are between three and six pounds in Asuyas Lake. Uh, this one here is just an 8.6 uh, downrigger rod by Cabela's. It's a medium light, so I have a nice soft tip at the top. That allows us to uh, make sure that we're not putting too much pressure on the on the fish's mouth when we're reeling in. Again, they're like kokanee, so you want to make sure that uh, you're not putting too much pull onto it, ripping that, that hook out of its mouth. Really important when you're setting the hook for these fish is that you want to make sure that the fish is committed and they're held on to that hoochie before you go and you know, reef that hoochie off and set that hook. They're not Chinook salmon, they're not trout, you don't have to reef at it. All you're going to do is if that rod starts to bend down, you're going to pull it out of your rod holder. And what I usually like to do is I like to wait for three knocks for my tip to go one, two, three. That way I know that the fish actually has a good hook set on it. I reel all the way down and then I pick just an easy sweep up like that. Feel it and then I'm going to pick up all that slack and then once I start to feel that fish, it's slow and steady wins the race and I bring the fish back in. Paying attention to trolling speed is very important. If you don't have a GPS on your sonar in your boat, bring along your car GPS, a Garmin unit or anything like that, anything that will show you your speed. Um, if you don't have a, a car GPS, you can also check out smartphone apps these days. There's tons of apps out there that will show your, show your speed. We're trolling anywhere between 0.8 mile per hour up to 1.6 mile per hour. And we're finding ideal, most of the summer, we've been getting our fish around 1.2, 1.3. If you can't slow your boat down enough, like my boat, I've actually got two pails out the back to slow me down. 
Um, I actually have to bring two pails as I'm going with the wind, and as soon as I'm going after or towards the wind, I'll pick up one pail. But again, I'm just really trying to hone in on that speed and keeping sure that I'm around that 1.3 miles per hour. So make sure that you're paying attention to that. And uh, if you start to get strikes, look at what speed you're going and try to duplicate those results. So when trolling for these sockeye, what you want to be doing is you want to be doing erratic motions. Uh, you want to troll in a straight line for some time, but once you start going over tops of schools of fish, there's a few things you can do to help entice that bite. There's this good old standard S-turns, large S-turns, allowing that inside rod to drop down, and then that outside rod to tighten up. That will slow down, that will tighten up. Most of the time, you'll get your hits when you're starting to go make the, the outside turn as that inside rod starts to tighten up again. That's usually when the sockeye will hit. Just like when you're trout fishing or kokanee fishing. Another one you can do, another method, is when you start to see a school of fish that you know that you've gone through a school of fish on your sonar, a lot of times these sockeye will follow your gear. And you can easily just throttle up, throttle back down. That will make the flashers or dodgers, whatever tackle you're using, speed up and then drop again. And because it's a different erratic motion, it's a different motion than what they're seeing, they'll actually chase after it and they'll actually try to hit it. And it's really fun to be able to actually uh, see your fish on the sonar, throttle up and you hit them. And uh, it's a real satisfying feeling when you get them on. So one thing that's really important is before you put that uh, your tackle down with your downriggers, you always want to check the action on your gear. You want to make sure that, you know, nothing's tangled up, that it's operating the way it's work, it's supposed to be, you know. So here's a flasher. I hope that you can see it on the camera there. But I can got a good smooth rotation of that flasher and that hoochie is working well. It's sitting good. <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it back up and I'm going to let it out. I'm fishing anywhere between 40 to 60 feet away from the boat. On the slower days of fishing for sockeye, sometimes what I'll do is I'll actually resort to actually using scent. Anything in shrimp to krill. Uh, there's lots of different types of scents out in the market. Like this one here from, uh, it's called Super Dipping Sauce. It just says sockeye and kokanee. It's a good little, uh, little additive to your presentation. That way you're not only just using the action to attract them with the flash, but also they feel it from the uh, displacement of the water. And then the, adding that scent allows them to really key in and hone in onto that hoochie. Again, they're not feeding in on the, on the uh, fresh water, but they are, um, they are enticed by having that scent and that action happening. So just try out the, on the slower days of adding a little bit of different scents. Play around with it, find out the one that's working for you, and make sure you have them in your boat.